I must tell you, for those who are not so familiar with other Mahzorim, Chabad Mahz is much shorter than many other Mahzorim. They've got lots of extra stuff, which some do say and some don't say. I, I read once that in, back in Lubavitch, there would be someone standing next to the Chazan, and he would tell the Chazan, Do zuk minyo, do zuk there, was, uh, there were lots of stuff, and many, many shuls. They don't say everything. Some shuls do. And that's why they go until 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Rosh Hashanah, or, or even later. But here, we have this period of Darkecha. And what we have is actually a very short excerpt of a much longer period, which I didn't put the whole lot on the, on the board. So we have here Darkecha Lekeinu, and then we have Lamancha. Now, the, on the right of your board, of the, of the uh, screen, is a copy from the annotated Marzer. On the left is from uh, an old, old Marzer, uh, a general, Nusach Sfard, whatever. Now, you see here, there's a style of Chazim called Darkecha Lekeinu. Then there's again Lamancha, and then there's a Piyut. And you can see here, in the Piyut where I'm pointing to, now you say Darkecha. Next piece, Lamancha. Then the next piece, Tal is, um, and the response is Darkecha. The next piece is Lamancha. It goes back and forth. And then the last piece is Tal Arucho Le Ole Nidov. And then the last piece is Darkecha Le Kainu. So, in other words, the last piece is not Lamancha. The last piece is Darkecha. So, although in the Chabad Nigin, we have Darkecha Le Kainu, saying, Darling, Verek, him. So, that seems to be the end of the note as a song. So, to stop short, in the middle of the second Darkecha, seems a bit, a bit funny. And the Oilam is used to sing Lamancha the second time also. But I've been in contact actually with the, ed with, you know, the editors at Kahos, who agreed that really the second time Lamancha should not be there. Um, and I just want to share that with the Oilam and how the Chazonim are going to manage this. And all right, so we'll, say, we'll sing it. I, 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 I'm, I just want to add one more point. Mashvel Vashon Ravasuda. He um, often referred to a, a, uh, a recording of the Rebbe by a Fabrengen, and they were singing Darkecha. And at the end of each time, he, and again, Darkecha, and then and at the end of this line, instead of the Olam, letting the Olam going back to Lamancha, the Rebbe would again, Darkecha, like 10 times the Rebbe insisted on going back to Darkecha. And just to look at those words, Darkecha is a very positive message that Hashem has, has a, a, lot, a lot of patience with us, even if, whether we're bad or good. And that is the praise. What's the Lamancha finishing off? That we are standing empty handed. So it's a much more negative message. And therefore it makes sense that although it has to be said, but the the uh, the gemar, so to speak, is on the positive note. But he and that's what you have in the Machzorim. So just bear that in mind.